Nah, just kidding. Hola! Hey, hey, hey. Mr. Warrior here at your service. Welcome to another math video. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness, I get so excited every time. It's like, yes, Mr. Warrior, it's another lesson. Yes! Long live math! <laughs> Anyway, hey, let's get started. What are we doing today? Oh my goodness. Yes, it's problem solving. Lesson 5.8. Oh, I love problem solving because that really is what math is. It's all about solving problems, you know. Anyway, our topic, as you can see here, is problem solving decimal operations. Ooh, sounds really sophisticated, doesn't it? We are going to be doing decimal operations. <laughs> it's like, okay, sounds kind of oh, clandestine, like kind of like we're on a secret mission. Our learning target, I like to call the essential question, is our learning target. How do you use the strategy work backward to solve multi-step decimal problem? I like that, work backward. Woohoo! yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, it is now time to unlock the problem. That's right, my friends, it's real world, baby, real world problem real world. <laughs> I really kind of emphasize that as opposed to fake world. No, this is the real world, my friends, in a real problem. Garson spent $15.99 for two books and three pens. The books cost $4.95 each. The sales tax on the total purchase was $1.22. Carson also used a coupon for 50 cents off his purchase. If each pen had the same cost, how much did each pen cost? Woo! Wow! What a problem, huh? You're thinking, Mr. Wara, I'm seeing stars right now. Uh, what's my name? No. Hey, you know what, you guys? This is doable. Let's take a closer look. So we have read the problem. So what do I need to find? It also has what information do I need to use? How will I use the information? Okay. So let's go ahead and think about that. What do we need to find? Well, that's really nice because that's right in the question. So let's go ahead and write that down. Now, what information do I need to use? This might be a little bit more complicated, but we're still able to do this. Well, information we might use here is, well, Carson did spend $15.99 for two books and three pens. That seems important to me. Also, we need to know that each book costs $4.95. That's in the problem. And we also need to know and to solve this problem, I believe, and that's the uh, sales tax that was on the total purchase. And also, he used a coupon uh, for $0.50 cents off. There's a lot of information there, but let's get all that down. Okay, I wasn't sure I was going to get that to fit in that little box, but I managed to get it in there. Now it says, how will I use the information? Well, this is our learning target. What we can do in this particular problem is just work backward from the amount Carson actually spent to find the cost of each pen. So let's go ahead and write that down. Okay, I can work backward from the amount Carson spent to find the cost of each pen. Okay, wow, this is pretty cool. Now let's go ahead and solve the problem. Now it says make a flow chart to show the information. Ooh, I like flow charts. Then using inverse operations, work backward to solve. And remember an inverse operation is just an operation that is like the opposite of what you're doing here. So don't be confused by that big word, inverse operations. It's gonna be used a lot this year. But you know, an example is just an inverse operation. If you tie your shoe, the inverse operation is to untie your shoe. And so here it's like if you're gonna multiply, then an inverse operation would be to divide. So it's like doing the opposite. But we're gonna work backward to solve. So here, let's take a look what they have. In this case, what they're doing is they're just saying the cost of three pens, three times um, the cost of each pen, plus the cost of two books, plus the amount of tax, minus the amount of the coupon, equals the total spent. And then look, we're going to come back around and look at that. You'll see how this works out here just a little bit. So let's remember here again, the cost of two, two books up there in the problem was actually $4.95. And then the amount of tax, we know that's up in the problem. You can see that up there, $1.22. We're going to subtract uh, the amount of the coupon, which we know was $0.50. Cents. And, of course, that's going to equal the total amount spent. And we already know what he totally spent. It tells us. It tells us it's $15.99. Try to make my five a little bit neater here. <laughs> I know. Mr. War is doing some of his magic again. Okay. So now we have our total spent. So are we good so far? This makes sense? Okay. 
let's start working backwards. So the total spent then here is the $15.99. Now we're going to add on our coupon. And the reason why we're going to add on our coupon is because we're doing the opposite. It was subtracted up above. So we're going to add that on because he spent $15.99. But remember, he saved 50 cents. So we're adding that back on as we do the reverse, the inverse operation. Now, this is when we're going to start subtracting. We're going to subtract our sales tax, which was $1.22. We're also going to subtract the cost of two books. $4.95 twice is $9.90. You can multiply that by two and check. And that's going to equal, do we have that cost at this point? No, we'd have to do the math here. So let's go ahead and do... So let me do the work right here. So I have $15.99. Let me go ahead and add that 50 cents to that. We get nine, there's 14 decimal. Remember, bring it on down. Okay, six, so I have 16.49. Now I need to subtract $1.22 and bring it on down. Nine minus two is seven, four minus two is two. So let me continue up here. $15.27 then. We're gonna subtract $9.90. Okay, seven minus zero, that's easy, seven. Here we're gonna have to regroup. Oh, bring her on down, get that decimal down. So I'll come all the way over here to the tens place. Loan one ten, ten ones. Now he's gonna get one of his ones. So you make 10 tenths. And, ooh, and that's just 12, we stop there, that's right. So 12 minus nine is three, and then 14 minus nine is five. And we end up with $5.37. Now keep in mind, $5.37 is the actual cost of three pens. But if you remember, the question that we were asked is, yeah, what if each pen had the same cost? So we need to know what the cost is of one pen. This only gives us the cost of three pens. So we're going to take that $5.37 over here, and we're going to divide that by three because there were three pens. And then we can go ahead and divide that. Um, I guess I'll do my work over here. Bring that decimal up. B is going to go into five one time, subtracting and a two. And then I'm also going to bring down my three here. Three is going to go in there. Looks like about seven times. Twenty-one. End up with two. Bring down my seven. Yeah, nine is twenty-seven. Bring that to zero. So that is going to equal one dollar and seventy-nine cents. So the cost of each pen was one dollar and seventy-nine cents. Now, I think what would be a good thing to do now that we've done all our work is to go ahead and check it. And one way we can check it when we have so many calculations like this in real life, if this is a real, real world problem, is that is to use a calculator. So we're going to get a calculator. And so that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to check our work. So we're going to take our $15.99. We're going to add 0 0.50. And that gives us sixteen forty nine. Yes, that's what we got down below. Great. We're also going to, now we're going to subtract $1.22, and that's going to equal $15.27. That's correct. Now, we also need to subtract $9.90, and that does equal $5.37. Great. So now we've gotten to the point where we have the three pens cost of $5.37. Now we need to divide. So if we take that money there and we're going to divide, which is this bar right here on this particular calculator, divide by three. Find out what each pen is going to equal and we end up with $1.79. Awesome. So we checked our work and this where, that's where a calculator can be handy. Now it says mathematical practice over here in the corner. Explain why the amount of the coupon was added when you worked backward. I think we already answered that. Yeah, it was added because it was subtracted. Remember, it's all about the inverse operation. So that's the reason why that occurred. Okay, so I think it's time for Page Master. Cool. So what here is is try another problem. It says last week Vivian spent a total of twenty dollars. She spent nine dollars and ninety-five cents for tickets to the school fair, five dollars and ninety-five cents for food, and the rest for two rings that were on sale at the school fair. If each ring had the same cost, how much did each ring cost? Okay, so again, we, we have these questions. We have the question of what do I need to find? So let's get that down. I need to find the cost of each ring. What information do I need to use? We went through this before. Well, we definitely need to know that she did spend $20. She spent $9.95 for tickets. Uh, and that was to the school fair. $5.95 for the food. 
and then the rest for two rings. We need to know all that information. So let's write that down. Okay, that's that one box that fills up very, very fast. Now it says, how will I use the information? Well, this is very similar to the problem we just did. Yeah, I can work backward from the amount that Vivian spent to find the cost of each ring. Same pattern as the last one. Let's write that down. Okay, this sets up the problem so it really helps us take it apart, look at how we're going to do it. So now let's solve the problem. You know, this might be an opportunity if you wanted to take this on. You could go ahead and try to solve this problem first and see if you can use the flow chart like we did in the previous problem. Okay, so I've set up our problem, much like the other flow chart. I want to get this set up so I've had a chance to analyze it and think about what we're doing. So remember, just like the last time, we're looking at in the problem, it states that there's the cost for the rest was the cost for two rings. Very similar to the last problem, we're going to have the cost of, in this case, it's going to be two rings. We're just going to write that this is two times the cost because we're trying to write our multiplication equation or our equation of each ring. Okay, plus is just like above we have the cost of the tickets remember the cost of the tickets they gave us that price right that was nine dollars and 95 cents plus and then we have the cost of food another expense which turns out to be five dollars and 95 cents and here oops should also have an equal to here there we go that's gonna be equal to and then of course the total spent which we have that amount which was twenty dollars now this is when we do the inverse operation. Now we're going to go back and start working backwards. We'll start working backwards with our $20. Oops, sorry, that needs to be down here. $20, if we're going to remain consistent. Here is going to be total spent. Now we're going to subtract. Remember here we have the cost of food, which was $5.95. We also have the cost of the tickets. So we're subtracting that, and that was five no $9.95. dollars of course, is going to equal, this is going to be the cost of the two rings, which we don't know what that is yet because we haven't solved this equation. So what we need to do is to solve that. So I think I'll come up here. Camera guy. So $20. Going to do a lot of regrouping here. Five. And then we have, oh, nine minus nine, that's zero. So we have $14.05. So $14.05 minus $9.95. Bring her on down. We have zero. We're going to have to regroup here. Zero, 14, 13, carry the one. It's one, 13, that's going to be four. And it stops right there. We end up with $4.10. But that's the price of two rings. So we need the cost of each ring. So we're going to need to take that $4.10 and we need to divide by two. But let's just do this in our head. Four divided by two is two. 10 cents is going to be five cents. So that means then, each ring is going to be $2.05. Okay, now I'm not going to bring up my calculator because this video is a little bit longer than our normal video. So, but you could get that calculator out and go ahead and check your work. Okay, I just said, oh, there's the math talk right there. Explain how you can check your, your answer. Yeah, I would get a calculator out at this point, but you could actually go back and double check your work. My friends, yes, it's, it's the end. Tell me it's not true. <laughs> Wait, let me get my tissues. <gasps> I'm kidding, Mr. War is just here to say it's the end of this video, but there's many more videos to come. Thank you again for joining me, and now, live long and prosper.